Hey everybody, uh, we're back here for turn four, uh, but like with most of my other turns, there were a couple of errors in turn three. These were relatively minor. They did not affect anything, at least not in a positive way for me, maybe a little bit negative on one of them, but just wanted to mention them to let you know I did catch them. The first, they were both an impulse two, and the first uh, was with Private Walsh. He should have been given an extra minus two modifier for his run and gun order. That would have brought his two hit number at that point back to negative one. Now, we talked a little bit about it earlier. That does not mean he can't hit the, the target. There is a rule in this game called the rule of zeros. And if your two hit number is below zero, that comes into play. And there's a very unlikely but still real chance that you could still hit the target. The other error was with Private Goldstein. He's using a bar, remember. And on the bar, if you'll recall, there is a rate of fire of one or two. And you have to state that ahead of time. I believe I stated I wanted to shoot twice, but when I ended up actually firing, the first fire was a hit, and I went through the whole process of, of uh, assessing the hit. I never came back and uh, uh, applied the second hit. I never actually did it. And so those were the two errors. Neither one of them gave me an advantage of any kind. Uh, and uh, so I just wanted to get those out of the way. Now... We're ready to start turn number four, and like I mentioned earlier, something happens here. If you'll recall back in the setup, at the turn of start four, draw four more enemy characters. And then also, when it comes time to give them orders, we use the same uh, D6 order for those guys. The ones already out on the field get their orders through the cards, but the orders for the four new ones come from the dice. And they start out, the first one will go on 3508, and that's red. Next one is 3507, and that's also red. Next will be 3506, and this one's a red. And finally, maybe we can get some blue help. We do. 3505. So they all start on the right side of the board. They can, probably will, make their way into the main part of the board. All right. So you do that as the first step here at turn four. You then proceed with turn as normal, except when you get to the enemy orders phase. Uh, instead of giving them orders via cards, you give them orders via the dice roll. So, let's begin. The first step is the friendly card phase, and the first part of that step says, if the player does not currently have any cards in his hand, he may draw one now. I don't have any cards in my hand, so I am going to draw one. Here's the card I draw. It's uh, card number 14. It's a discard card, which means I don't uh, won't be using this as a discard because I only have the one card and it's going to have to be used uh, for the initiative. I don't have any cards set aside for the plan. Remember, we tried a plan order with Corporal Thomas, but it failed. Uh, I don't have more than five cards. So I'm going to go ahead and play this card now. And the initiative numbers are Charlie Team with 46, but Baker team with four, so they're probably going to go first. But before I do that, let's look at the orders. Now, uh, I'm going to do Charlie team first. I've got Private Walsh is up here, but remember, he is lightly wounded and he is shaken. I would really like to give him a rally order to get rid of that shaken marker, but I'm also a little worried about that soldier right there because I would also like to do a plan order here but I don't think I can do both of them in one turn I think one of those two characters has to fire and since one of them has to fire I'm going to go with Corporal Thomas because he's got the best chance to hit and so 
for uh, Private Walsh, I am indeed going to go ahead and issue a rally order. If he still has this order at the end of the turn, uh, there's a chance that his morale may improve. And if he's within command range of Private Thomas, uh, his command may uh, improve even more. So we're going to give him a rally. Private Thomas, because I don't want him to move so he can stay in, in place for the rally command, but I also want to take uh, advantage of the fact that he's using a grease gun with a high rate of fire and a high weapon skill. I'm going to give him a rapid fire order so he can fire in all phases, impulses. For Private Stubbs over here, uh, he cannot see either of these two enemy soldiers, so I'm going to give him a move order. And the only move order I have that also is firing is run and gun. So I'm going to give Private Stubbs run and gun. Now down to Baker team. Baker team is down here. I still want to get them up into the rocks and the building area. And so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the old standby run and gun for all three orders. This hopefully will let all three of them move multiple times and fire perhaps multiple times. Right now they can only see these two and he's out of ammo. So give those guys run and gun orders. We're done giving orders now for the friendly characters. We move on to the next step which is the enemy card and orders phase. Now before I do anything else I'm going to roll for the orders for the four new characters. And again remember those are rolled for on that D6 chart. So the bottom one gets a 5, and that is a sneak 5 order. So let me again go ahead and start digging through my sneak orders. Sneaking 5 means he's going to move in this direction. The next carrier or character right above him, he rolls a 1, and that's an evade 5, 6. Okay. That means he's going to move four times, as opposed to the sneak, which only moves twice. And he's going to move down and, and to the left. So these guys are starting to move in, get into this area. Could cause problems for us here. The last red character, he rolls a four, which is an evade six. Okay, The evade six, he's just going to move... Again, all four impulses, but directly in this direction, into the rocks. Finally, the blue character. Roll for him. That's another one, and that's another evade, five, six. So he'll move similar to the red character. All right. That's the end for those four characters, but we still have six existing characters out on the map. They will get their orders in the same way they always do. We'll start with red, and I'm going to start with the red up here at the top of the hedge. And because this is the first red card again, it'll be for initiative. Their initiative will be 19. He is in uh, normal morale, and he's in cover. So he's going to get an evade 5-6-G, which means we need to check and see if he's within four spaces, and he's not. So he indeed will get Evade 5-6. So let me find Evade 5-6, another one. Here we go. He's going to move down into this cornfield. I maybe wish before this is done that he was firing. All right, we'll go to the character right here. And his card, he's in cover and in uh, na uh, normal. He gets a hide G. Now this is critical. He's most definitely within four uh, spaces of a known spotted friendly character, which means it's possible his hide order is going to get changed to a grenade order. And in order for that to happen, you make a troop quality check. Now his is six. If I roll, and no modifiers, if I roll a six or less, his order gets changed to grenade, and we'll get to see something we haven't seen yet. So the die is rolled, and it's a seven. So no, 
his uh, order doesn't change, and so it'll stay at the hide order. He's going to stay right there and let my guys take pot shots at him. We'll move over to the last red character over to the right. I believe he's in stones, which means he's in cover and normal morale. That's an aimed fire G order. Let's take a look. He's not within four uh, hexes, so he will indeed get the aimed fire order. All right, we now have three other orders for the blue team, including their initiative card. This blue team member here is out of ammo. This blue team member is, and they're all in uh, uh, regular normal morale. He's in the cornfield, he's in the rocks, he's in the rocks. So we have two uh, in cover and one not. We're gonna go with the out of ammo one here. And again, this will also be their initiative card. Initiative will be 57. He's in cover and in normal morale. That's an evade 6G. Taking a quick look, he's not within four. So he's going to get an evade 6 order. Now, he's out of ammo, which means he can't shoot. He does have grenades, but he can't shoot. Had, instead of evade, he been given a shoot order because he has that out of ammo marker uh, that would have been changed to reload, but he didn't, and it's not, and so, therefore, it's an evade order. We'll now go to the character in the open uh, above the rocks. He's got run and gun 4-5C, still not within four hexes, so he does indeed get run and gun 4-5. Let me go ahead and find that. There's the run and guns. Six five two threes, two ones, four five, right here. Running gun four five. So he's gonna be on the move and perhaps do some shooting. And last will be this character here in the rock. So he's in cover, normal morale. He gets aimed fire G. He's not within four characters or four hexes. So he gets an aimed fire. That's it for the orders phase. What we have left now to do is to do our uh, initiative order. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Looking at our cards. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put this card in the blue area. So we've got Baker team with four. We've got red team with 19. We've got Charlie team at 46, and last and least is blue team with 57. So that'll be our order for all four impulses here in the fourth turn. Actually, I'm sorry, it's, it was this one over here. It was 41, and I put it in the wrong spot. I had it all along. That being the case, these two switch spots, because it's a 41, not a 57. So. It'll be Baker team, red team, blue team, Charlie team. All right, let's come back up to the map. And let's start here with turn four. I'm going to move the map just a little bit. And I'm going to move it over just a smidge. All right, so first up is Baker team. We are down here with Baker team. And Impulse 1, they all have move orders. And so I'm going to move Private Johnson just straight up. I'm going to move Private Goldstein here. And I'm going to move Private Miller to here. Now, uh, in no case can they see any of my six unknown enemy characters, so there's no spotting. And that's the end of their Impulse. We now move to the red team. And we start top to bottom. So we start up here with an evade five. And in this particular uh, compass setting, five is straight down. So he moves straight down to here. Now, here's we, we've talked a little bit about this in the past. When an enemy character moves into cover and can spot 
a known enemy character or a known friendly character. He might not hear, he can't hear, but he can certainly spot here. They need possibly to check and see if their order changes. And so I'm just going to quickly look here at uh, enemy movement. It's not modified by morale or wounds. Uh, if they pass, it changes to a duck back order. Uh, a fail, it doesn't change. And it doesn't apply if the movement order is run and gun, grenade, or charge. And it's not any of those, so this most certainly applies. So we do a troop quality check against a, mora or a troop quality of four. A four or less, and his order changes to duck back. And it's an eight, so it stays currently what it is. All right. Again, we're going top to bottom, which means we come way over here. He's got an evade six, which means he moves one in this direction. There's no more spotting needed for enemy characters. At this point, all of our friendly characters are spotted. There is a way actually to make them hidden again, but I don't think we're going to get there in this, in this game. All right, next is evade five, six. So he moves down into the same hex as this soldier and he's got a sneak zero well he does nothing on on zero in the first impulse next will be here he's got aimed fire which is zero in the first impulse and he's got hide which is also zero in the first impulse in all impulses so that's the end of the red turn we now go to the blue turn we start here he's got an evade five six so he moves straight down on the first impulse We've got a run and gun, four, five. He's got a movement of one here in this first impulse, and so he moves in direction four, which is here. Still can't see anybody. Next up will be this soldier. He's got aimed fire at zero. And then finally, evade six. And six is in this direction, so they now share the same uh, hex. That's the end of the blue team impulse, which leads us to Charlie team. Now we've got rally. Nothing's going to happen. We've got run and gun, and I'm actually going to move him here. Okay? I'm not sure at this point whether there's going to be line of fire to that soldier coming down the hedge. So let's take a look. And yes, there still will still be line of sight. So next will be, and last, will be Corporal Thomas, because remember, Private Walsh has rally. He's got rapid fire, which means he can fire. The only character he can see is that one who is hiding. So he's using a grease gun. Here's the M3 grease gun. Max range is only 12, while well, the range is 1. So he gets a plus two modifier, but his rate of fire is three. He can actually hit three times. So it's a plus two modifier on range. The enemy character's order is hide in a hedge, which is a minus three. So that's a net effect of minus one on the modifier. But we have rapid fire, which is minus two more. So it's a total of minus three on the modifier. His weapon skill is five. That means we have a two hit number of two. Uh, but we get three chances. So odds are we're gonna get at least one hit here. So let's go ahead and roll. First chance is a four, that's a miss. Second chance is an eight, also a miss. And the third and final shot is another eight. So they all three missed. Hmm. I figured for sure we'd get one hit out of that, but we didn't. And I'm also going to put the enemy KIA soldier right where it belongs. That's the end of Baker team, and that's the end of the first impulse. So we're going to continue on. We'll go to impulse number two. We start with Baker team, and in this instance, the order for all three, again, it's run and gun, is a red one, which is a fire order. Now, he can certainly see, I believe, certainly him and maybe him. He can't see anybody because he's blocked by the rocks, the house, and the hedge. Private Goldstein, I don't think, can see anybody. 
So let me check those two lines of sight just to be certain here before we get going. First we'll do Private Miller. And he's got an evade. Well, actually, remember, they're both in this hex now, so he can definitely see both. Private Goldstein definitely cannot. So Private Miller has to shoot. Private Goldstein and Private Johnson both have to move. So here's how we're going to do this. First, I'm going to have Private Johnson move into the house. All right. And he now has line of sight, certainly, I believe, to this character. He may or may not to these characters because of the tall grass. But additionally, he comes into one of those four areas that gives us bonus victory points. And so I'm just going to set this marker aside as a reminder of that. So let me take a quick look with the tall grass to see if that uh, is, is blocking line of sight for those sneak and evade orders. Tall grass blocks line of sight if it's sneak, which means this character cannot be seen. But these other three, as long as other line of sight matches up, can. And additionally, I'm pretty sure this one can as well. So let's take a look. Absolutely. 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 And absolutely. So we're going to have four separate spotting checks. Here, 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 and here. This one, again, is not seen because of the sneak order. So... We'll do first the one in the rocks right here with the aimed fire order. That's also going to be good for him when his impulse comes up. The line of sight is one, two, three, four, five hexes away there. That is a modifier of zero. He's got an aimed fire order in rocks, which is a minus three. And Private uh, Johnson has a troop quality of five, but he's bold with a plus one, so that's six. Modifier of minus three makes it a three or less for a spot. And it comes up as two. So that is spot. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if this is a real soldier or a dummy. It's a real soldier. Um, and on top of that, it is another NCO. So not only is he going to get to fire here in a second, he's got better stats. All right. Next, we'll do this red sharing the hex with the other red. He's got, an, these are all in the open, and they're all evades, so their die roll modifiers will be the same. And evade in the open is a plus one. Taking a look at distance, let's see. Well, you know what? I'm going to check one last time just to make sure this hex is not in the way. And it's not. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 for the other two. And in both cases, that's no modifier at all. Um, so we've got a plus one modifier due to evade in the open. But like Private Miller, he's got plus one. Well, we already knew that. So his troop quality is six with a plus one modifier. So for all three of those soldiers, it's a plus seven, or a seven or less. Again, we're going to go with the one sharing the hex first. That's a one, so he spotted. Let's take a look. And another soldier. I was kind of hoping some of these would be dummies. We'll go with the red character. Again, seven or less. The roll is a nine, so that red character is not spotted. And finally, the blue, the roll is another nine, so he also is not spotted. All right. Private Johnson is done with his move and his spotting. Private Goldstein now moves, and I'm going to move him straight up. He's still in the rocks. He can't see anybody, so no spotting. Finally is Private Miller. He's going to have to shoot, and he can choose to shoot at either soldier. They're both in the rocks. One has aimed fire, one has evade. I'm going after the one with aimed fire. Now, the distance is one, two, three, four. 
a distance of four is no modifier with an M1. He's got an aimed fire order in the rocks, which is a minus two modifier on the weapon skill. We've got another minus two modifier right here for run and gun. And so that actually comes out to a, a weapon skill of zero. He needs an exact zero to hit. And he gets a one, wouldn't you know it? So he also misses. And let's see here, that's Baker team. And uh, well, hold it, we're in the second impulse. Um, they're done with their impulse. That'll bring us to red team. Starting at the top, and now actually this one's at the top, so he evades six to here. He evades six to here. Next up is here, he evades six to here. We now have sneak five, and finally hide zero. And aimed fire, now last, one. So he can shoot. This is the only character he can see. Well, actually, you know what? He might be able to see Private Stubbs. Let's just take a quick look and see at that. No, the hedge is in the way. So he's going to shoot at Private Miller. Uh, he's shooting with... Okay, he's shooting with a slightly different weapon. You'll notice here, he's got a different weapon. It's not a Car 98K. In fact, this is the MP40, and I'll show you its statistics. It's right here. Range is 20, so he's good. He's four away, so the modifier is zero, but like the grease gun, he's going to get to roll three attacks. All right, so the range is zero. He's run and gun in the open. which is plus, oh, I'm sorry, which is minus one. His order is aimed fire. His weapon skill is five, so he's down to a four or less, but he gets three chances. First chance, he rolls a one. This is a hit. This is why you roll them one at a time, so you can see the, the uh, consequences. Light wound is the result. So, a couple of things happen. First, he gets a light wound marker, and we'll put these all together in a second. Second, his order changes from whatever it was to duck back. And then thirdly, we take a morale check, or more appropriately, a wound morale check. And that's against his... Uh, Troop quality, which is a modified 5, minus 1 for the wound is 4. So let's roll and see what we get. He gets a 0. A wound morale check with a result of 0 is no effect. So he stays right where he is as far as that goes. Let's stack these markers back. He'll get a hide order next time. That's the end for red team. We now go to blue team. Start here, he gets evade six. Then we're here, he gets run and gun, but he can't see anybody. So he has to move in direction five. Oh, let's see here. He's got aimed fire, and he can see Private uh, Johnson now. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, a distance of five. He's also using a grease gun. Oh, wait a minute. I almost did the same thing here I did with Private Goldstein. We have two more shots against Private Miller at a, at a four. Next one is a five. Last one is a seven, so no more hits. So we now go to the shooting here. It's a... a Distance of one, two, three, four, five, so there's no modifier there. He's got run and gun in the building. Run and gun in the building is minus two. All right, so it's a minus two modifier. Additionally, aimed fire, so there's nothing else. His skill is five. Minus two makes it a three. 
He needs three or less, but he gets three rolls. One. That's a hit. I'm actually just going to roll all three so I don't forget. Second one is seven. Third one is zero. So we've got two hits, perhaps, depending on what happens with the first one. And that third one also has some morale significance. So the first hit on Private Johnson, close call, morale check. His morale right now is six because he's got a bold uh, morale. So we roll the morale check. Comes up as seven. He fails his morale check. And so on a failed morale check, that's a minus one morale level. So he's no longer bold. All right, now, second shot missed, third shot hit again, but with a zero. And remember, when you hit with a zero, the shooting character gets a morale boost. So he goes up to bold. And we also then have to take care of the actual shot. And this comes up as friendly event. Now, this is a special card. When you draw this card, and there's also another card called enemy event, you're supposed to, normally, Go ahead and do the event. However, uh, in this case, since events are not part of the of this scenario, and then after doing the event, you, you shuffle. So we're going to shuffle the friendly cards. This is how the friendly cards get shuffled. Do this real quick. And then we draw again to finish out the process of whatever it was we were doing that drew the card. In this case, it's a wound. The only card that does not get put into this is the initiative card. It stays. The rest of the cards get shuffled in. Discards, cards that hadn't been used yet, what have you. And finally, one more. All right. And we draw again for Private Johnson's wound. Close call, another close call, meaning we do another morale check. This time his morale is only five. It's not six because uh, he lost his morale from being shot at the first time. And he gets a nine, which means he fails again. And a nine on a morale check is not good. I'll show you again here what that means. Morale check, that's minus two morale levels. So again, he flies right through cautious, right to shaken. Same as what Private Walsh has. This is not good here. So he's shaken. But that's the end of that Blue Soldier's turn. Next is, this Blue Soldier's already gone and moved into the tree. Last is Evade 6. He's no longer sharing. But what he is, is in the wide open road. That's the end of the blue team impulse. We now go to Charlie team impulse. Private Walsh is rally, so he does nothing. We've got Private Stubbs right here. He's going to shoot uh, with an M1 Garand at range one. So that is a plus two modifier. The enemy target has a hide order in a hedge. That's minus three. So in the end, it's a minus one modifier. Uh, run and gun is minus two more, so it's a minus three modifier on a weapon skill of five. That means he needs a two or less. And he gets a four, so he misses. Meaning, we're going to have to go back in with rapid fire with Corporal Thomas. The distance is one. That, again, is a plus two modifier. Hide and hedge is a minus three modifier, so we're at minus one. And again, we have a minus two uh, order modifier for rapid fire, but he gets three to try to get a two or less. First one is a two, so that's a hit. And again, I'm going to roll for all three. Second one is a four. Third one is a one. So like uh, just a few seconds ago, we actually could have two separate hits happen here. So here's the first hit check. Bad wound. All right, a bad wound, the first thing you do is you place the bad wound marker, which is a minus three modifier on his troop quality. So he's down to three. 
You then change his order to duck back. Not that it matters, it's already hide. And then you make a wound morale check. Now his morale is normally, or a true quality is six, but he's got a minus three on his wound. So that brings him down to three. Doing the wound morale check, it's a five, which means he failed and that's minus two morale levels. So he goes from normal also down to shaken. Now shaken brings with it another minus two morale. That puts him at minus five with a normal he's at six. So he's also at one, just like one of the soldiers was last time. That's the end of the first hit, but there's another hit. Any kind of wound here at all and the game's over. Bad wound. Doing these things in order, you give him his bad wound, that's enough to bring his troop quality below zero, and that trooper is out of the game. Uh, another killed in action, which means more victory points. And I'll put the enemy KIA marker there. So that's there. And that's the end of Charlie Company's turn and Impulse. And that's the end of Impulse number two. Just going to take a quick short break and we'll be back with Impulse 3. All right, we're back now for Impulse number 3 and we start with Baker Team. Now, with Baker Team, first off, Private Miller, his duck back changes to hide. He's not going anywhere. He's got a hide order. Um, Private Goldstein has run and gun, so he has to move one. And he's going to move right up into the rocks. And Private Johnson also has run and gun, but he's also shaken. Um, I'm going to leave him right where he is, staying in the building. So that's the end of Baker team. We now move to Red team. This is the, the, the character closest to the top. Third impulse is uh, a, one with the, a move one with evade six, so he moves to here. Next, we have Evade 5, which means he comes down. Over here, we have Evade 5. Here, we have Sneak, but it's 0. And here, we have Aimed Fire, but it's 0. So that's the end of Red Team. We now go to Blue Team, and we only have three, I'm sorry, four Blue Team soldiers left on the map. First is Evade 5. Then we've got aimed fire zero. Well, hold it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we only have four blue soldiers. We then have run and gun, but in the four direction, which is down here. And finally, we have evade six, which is down here. That's the end of blue team. We now go to Charlie team. He's got rally and does nothing. He's got run and gun. I'm actually going to move him here. I'm going to start bringing him over here because we're starting to get a little overwhelmed. So, and again, rally zero. He's got rapid fire, but nobody to shoot at, so he just stays where he is. That's the end of Charlie team. That's the end of impulse three. We're now going to move on, and that was a very quick impulse. Let's go ahead and move on to Impulse 4. This will be the last Impulse for Turn 4. We start with Baker Company. Uh, he's got hide, so nothing happens. He's got run and gun, see, meaning he can shoot. Now he can see here, he can see here, he can see here. Not here because of the sneak in the tall grass. And he can see here. I'm going to have Private Goldstein fire over here because he's kind of getting in the way and next turn could have a fire order and I certainly don't want to see that. He's got low ammo. Uh, it's a distance of two with the bar as his weapon, which is a modifier of plus one. He's got an evade in the open order, which is minus one, so those two modifiers cancel out. But run and gun is minus two on a weapons skill of four but, again, I can have two order or two attacks if I want it, and I'm going to take it. So he needs a two or less and has two attacks. First attack is a zero. 
Second attack is a seven. So the first attack hits. It's a zero, so his morale goes back up to bold. Remember, it was bold, then it came back down. Then we play a wound card, and it's a bad wound. So we'll place a bad wound marker here on this soldier. And he's out of ammo, remember, as well. So that's bad wound. Changes his order immediately to duck back. Not that it matters in impulse four. And he, he's just not going to get to move one last time. Actually, yeah, he hasn't moved yet. And we do a wound morale check. He's got a morale of four. It's a minus three modifier on the bad wound. That means a one or less. And it's a two, so he does not pass, which means it's minus two morale, which means he goes down to shaken. But I'm going to show you here again. Shaken has a minus two troop level, uh, troop quality. That brings his troop quality down negative five. It started at four, so he's out of the game. All right, got rid of another guy that could have been a problem. Uh, and that's the end of Private Johnson. He does, or uh, Goldstein, he does have spotting that he can do on both of these guys here. Not here because of the sneak. So let's do some spotting. That first blue soldier is one, two, three, four hexes away. Four hexes away is a plus one modifier. He's got run and gun in the, whoops, in the open. And run and gun in the open is a plus two modifier. That's plus three. And his, his normal troop morale is four, but it's got a plus one because of the bold. So that's a five plus three. His morale is eight. We roll, it's a three, so it's a successful check. Let's take a look. Keep our fingers crossed for a dummy. Well, no, we're not getting very lucky where that's concerned. All right, we do another check here. Seven, that's eight which is no modifier. He's got evade in the open, which is plus one. So that's plus one on a troop quality of modified of five, so that's six or less. Comes up as a zero, so we have another successful spot. And another soldier. We are now left with just two red unspotted characters. You know, I don't recall. I did not have him go yet. So he gets to shoot. He can see several of these characters. Not here, but he can certainly see these three. Um, I'm going to shoot at the aimed fire. Well, actually, no, I'm going to shoot here. This one, this guy here. That's a distance of four with an M1. That's no modifier. Uh, but the character is run and gun in the open. And that modifier is minus one. Run and gun is minus two for minus three, meaning his two hit number is going to be two or less. Seven, he misses. All right, uh, let's see. Can he see? Here, no. Can he see here? Quite possibly. We could maybe have another spot check happen. And I apologize for checking all these lines of sight. I'm not very good at eyeballing it, especially from the side. And yes, he can. I notice when I'm editing the videos and I look at the video from the camera, it's oftentimes obvious on the camera, but it's not when I'm just standing here looking at it. So, uh, but it is line of sight, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a modifier of zero. He's got an evade order, and he's in trees. Evade in trees is a minus one modifier. And he's at, oh, you know what? 
his shot missed anyway, but I forgot he had a minus two because of shaken. So his, his two hit should have been, I think, a zero or a one. Uh, but it didn't matter, he missed. But his uh, troop quality is three with a minus one modifier, which is two. And it's a one, so that is a successful spot. Taking another look. Dummy! So that's another soldier we can get rid of off the field. Now again, that's both good and bad. It's good because we don't have to deal with that soldier. It's bad in that we don't get a chance for victory points. But that's the end of Baker Team uh, Impulse for Impulse 4, and that's the end of Impulse 4, or for, uh, for Baker Team, that's the end of the turn. We now go to Red Team. We have four reds and three blues remaining on the field. And it seems to me I should have another enemy KIA soldier here. So I've got three. I've got four. Yeah, it was up here in the rocks. They were sharing. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four reds and three blues remaining on the field. Red goes first. Which means this one here, he's got an evade six, so he goes to there. Next will be here, which is sneak five. Here we have evade six. And here we have aimed fire. Now, he can see here for sure. I'm not sure he can see Goldstein because of these rocks. Again, another line of sight question that's probably obvious when you're watching it on video. No, it goes right through the rock. So he has to shoot down here at Private Miller. And that's a distance of one, two, three, four. Uh, with a, if I recall correctly, he's using a grease gun uh, or an MP40. So that's no modifier there. But we have hide in the open. That's a minus two modifier. So, and his aimed fire is no other modifier. He's three or less, but he gets three chances. First hit is, or first is a five, so that's a miss. A six is a miss, and a six is a miss. So all three of those missed. So he's done. And I believe, yeah, we've done everybody else. So that's the end of the red team impulse and turn. Blue team, we have evade six. We have aimed fire, and the only person he can see is here. No, actually, he can see here as well, I think. Again, it may be that those trees are in the way. So let's take a quick look. Well, you know what? It looks good to me, so I'm going to allow it. So he can hit either one of these guys. They're both run and gun. One is in the building. One is in the rocks. So which one is going to be easier to hit? It's going to depend on their modifier. Run and gun in the rocks is minus two. Run and gun in a building is minus two. So they're the same. So it's distance. One, two, three, four. They're both five away. So that's the same. Uh, and I believe then it's random order. So Private Goldstein on a one through three comes up as a six. So it'll be against Private Johnson is who he'll shoot at. And that's one, two, three, four, five. Um, he's also using a grease gun. So he gets three shots. Uh, five is no modifier. Uh, the run and gun is minus two. I'm sorry, the run and gun in the building is minus two. He's got aimed fire. So it's just minus two from the order and terrain. So that means he needs a three or less, but he has three chances. A nine, and a nine, remember, is a low ammo, but he still continues to shoot. Five, that's another miss. And finally, another five. So he also misses on all three, but he gets a low ammo marker. So he's done. That brings us to here, run and gun. 
he uh, gets to shoot again at either of these two, and it's going to be equal again. So it's going to be a uh, random chance. Private Goldstein on a one to three. It's a five, so it'll be Private Johnson again. This soldier here is using the car. One, two, three, four. That's a zero. Minus two modifier for being in the building with running gun. Another minus two modifier for his order of running gun. And his value, his, his uh, to hit is three, but we've got minus four. So what happens here is the rule of zeros comes into play. And what the rule of zeros says, uh, anytime a character's chance of success is less than zero, there's still a chance. Uh, the initial die roll must be zero. So we'll roll for a hit here first. Came up as a two. So the initial hit has to be a zero. Then there would be another die roll modified by other factors if that were the case. But he came up as a zero, so there's no hit. Uh, that's the end of blue team. Which brings us to Charlie team. We've got Rally does nothing. We've got Rapid Fire. He can't see anybody. He's got Run and Gun, and he may be able to see some of these characters over here because he's moved a little bit. So let's take a look. Okay, he absolutely can see here. He also can see here and here but not here because of sneak. So I've got three choices I can make. I'm gonna go with the closest one. He's using an M1, distance is five, so there's no modifier. He's aimed fire in the rocks. Aimed fire in the rocks is a minus two. He's got another minus two for run and gun, so that's minus four. His weapons skill is five. So that's a one or a zero to hit, and it comes up a one. All right, so that is a hit. So let's go ahead and draw for the hit. Close call morale check. All right, so his morale is five. There are no modifiers. Let's do a morale check. Comes up an eight. He fails his morale check. And failing a morale check is minus one to morale level, which means he goes to cautious. All right, I'm putting a cautious marker on him. And that's the end of Charlie Company. Now, that's the end of the fourth impulse. We are not quite done yet. We have to go through our end of turn steps, but we also have to go through his rally check. Um, there are no grenades on the field, there's no medics, there's no planning, but I'm also just going to go ahead and do uh, the rally check right here as well. And very quickly, uh, when you do a rally check, um, he, uh, it's modified by wounds but not morale. Okay, so the fact that he's shaken doesn't matter. But the fact that he's wounded does matter. So that's a minus one modifier to his troop quality. But uh, if the character is within a leadership range of a friendly leader, which he is, that's why I left them there, he gets a plus one. So between them, that breaks even. And so it's just a uh, roll straight up against his uh, troop quality, um, which is five. The roll is three, and when you succeed, you increase morale by one state. So his shaken becomes cautious, and that's a little bit better for next turn. All right, uh, finishing out the turn here real quickly. Uh, there's no smoke counters. There's no waiting soldiers. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove the orders for all the soldiers. Leaving other markers. You'll notice most of these markers have a morale or a 
low ammo or something on them or a wound. All right, that's the end of all the orders. It's not the last turn, so we do move our impulse marker back to one, move our in, uh, initiative track markers off, uh, and we set the turn marker to the next turn, and we do our discards. And that is the end of turn four. Now, we're a little over, well, we're somewhat over halfway. We've got three more turns remaining, uh, depending on whether, uh, you know, these enemy characters get wiped out or not. There's not very many left. We have four red and three blue remaining. Um, and so we may be able to start making some, some movement up to the top of the map to get those other location victory points. But that's the end of turn four, and we'll be back with turn number five.